Welcome to a very, very special version of Raiders of the Lost Art, an in-between seasons episode focused off on the Laughing Otter Music Festival and my good buddy Jeff Bosenberger. Um, I wanted to do this just purely because even though we're between seasons, I really want to highlight um, what Jeff was doing with this festival. Um, you know, he's, got, he's moved from the corporate world, being a CEO of a number of companies, traveling internationally all over the world, and then basically through the pandemic, really rekindling his passion for music and trying to create a music festival that does good for the whole world and for those involved. And so just talking to Jeff and hearing about his passion for music and his passion to take his existing knowledge for business and apply that to a rather big vision, I thought was something that's really, really commendable and really, really worth showcasing on this show. So had a great chat with Jeff and, you know, we chatted about a bunch of different things about his festival, how you might get involved and just really just to showcase his vision and passion. Without further ado, Jeff Bosenberger. Jeff, it's so good to have you on, buddy. It's, um, you know, I know we've been chatting a lot about um, your vision, your festival, and, and look, this is a special, really a special episode of Raiders because it's in between seasons. But after talking to you, I thought, you know what, you've got such a great vision here and a, a great a great story. So I wanted to sort of encapsulate that and get that out to market while you're, while you're communicating your, your vision to the market as well. Well, thanks for having me on and I appreciate you doing this special show and it is, it's, it's super exciting and there are a lot of really um, good people that are backing what we're doing and it's, uh, um, yeah, super exciting. So thanks for having me on. My pleasure, mate. So let's, let's, get, let's get into it. Laughing Otter Music Festival. Tell us all about it. What, what, what is the vision? What, how is it going? Okay, so the vision is to hold a global festival that's 24 hours of music. There'll be 15, 16 different bands uh, at live venues in at least uh, one major center in each continent, but we're looking at probably about 50, 10 to 15 different cities around the world. It'll be live streamed for that whole 24 hours. So when one, when one location starts and finishes, another one will start kicking in. Um, yeah, and, and the whole idea is to create this massive movement around music to raise money for and awareness for children in need all over the world. Wow, wow. Well, it's a, it's a, it's a great vision and it's a big vision. But um, so, mate, let's go back. Let's unpack this a little bit. So you've been in corporate life you know, for the last 30 or so years, been business, CEO, all this sort of stuff. How did that then transcribe? Like, what was that tipping point where you went, you know what, I want to start to, I want to change direction and follow this, this pathway. And where did that pathway come from? Well, it, it really, it was, there were three factors that really um, resulted in this. And um, I had this vision of this concert for a long time. I've been a music fan, drummer for years, uh, but I've always done that uh, just as a hobby. And this idea of holding a massive music festival in the, in the spirit of Live Aid for children has been in my head bubbling around for 15, 20 years. And what really triggered me into action was kind of three or four factors. One, uh, quite honestly, the birth of my child. Um, I, and between the birth of my child, um, losing a friend who decided to take his own life, um, turning 50, and just realizing the last third of my years, uh, last third of my career needs to be about more than making money. And I've had this idea bubbling in my head for so long, it's like, well, it's either now or never. And then you, you combine it with the fact that we've all gone through hell for the last uh, eight years, really. Every conversation that people were having has been negative, polarizing. Uh, it's not a political statement, it's just the way it's been. And then you layer COVID on top for the last two years and we all need a reason to celebrate, a, a reason to come together. And having a massive music festival in, uh, and uh, supporting children around the world and giving them a fair start in life, it just seems like the right thing to do right now. Well, mate, let's... Uh... It's a great vision. So, so tell me. So, I know it's a big vision. I know you're working with teams across the world. I know you've you, you, you've got a lot of balls in the air. But um, so, tell me about how people might want to get involved. Your Kickstarter. What are, what are the action plans you're doing right now to take turn this into a reality? All right. So the, the the I'm having a lot of conversations with artists and with the, with the music industry and and people like yourself who are well connected in the in the industry. And there's a lot of 
um, excitement and buzz go, uh, that's being created because, well, quite frankly, helping kids through music, that's not a hard sell. We, we want to do this, and it, the timing's right. Um, and so what we're doing as a first step is a Kickstarter campaign to generate the initial momentum and to do really some market research and some data analysis of where the interest is, uh, where it makes the most sense to, to hold the live events. So if people can jump on Kickstarter, they look for the Laughing Otter Music Festival and get a ticket or support in any way you can and help this movement uh, just get rolling. So the, so the vision is what? So we've got different, a different um, location in each continent and then there'd be X amount of bands playing at that venue for that period of time. And then as the time zone shift, you, you're moving to different different areas. And then you've got live streams. But you've also got some sort of package that you're going to be doing to promote um, uh, other bands. Like you've got some other marketing stuff where you're going to expose those bands, unsigned bands. And is that correct to, to a wider audience? Yeah, that's great. And being that we're all musicians and, um, you know, closet uh, musicians and big music fans, we came up with this idea called the Festival 500. Now, this is going to be a collection of 500 bands. We're capping it off at 500 so that everybody will get lots of visibility. Now, it doesn't promise that you're necessarily going to play, although we are going to choose at least one band from the Festival 500 for each of the locations. But what you will get as an up-and-coming band that's trying to cut through the noise and get heard, you will be one of only 500. You will be promoted globally. The, the, the goal is to have the Festival 500 become sort of an entity of themselves that is attached to the festival so that all of these, like these 500 bands who jump on board early will be able to ride the wave and the PR of a festival of this magnitude and the the vision of helping kids that's already starting to get some really positive messages uh, just today there was a an article released in uh, an irish newspaper in, in new york that just uh, was commenting on on what we're doing and um because it was an irish paper they they linked it into what bob geldof did uh 30 some odd years ago so for new bands there's a real opportunity to, to get involved early and become a, a part of this Festival 500. Now, we're not, we're not uh, dissecting by genre, so it doesn't matter what genre you are. Like um, You and I are both big music fans. If you look at my Spotify list, it goes from everything from Pantera to The Chicks uh, to ABBA to Slayer to, to Rush and everything in between. So I don't think music... I don't think it's judging does it no service. So we're not doing that. We're going to first 500 and let the fans decide if, if they like it or not. Well, mate, that's, that's pretty amazing. You know, I'm, I'm probably one of the only people I know that doesn't actually have Spotify because <laughs> people keep sending me Spotify links and I'm like, oh, I don't even have an account. But but um, <laughs> but um no, but I, I, I can imagine. I, I know what you mean about a, a varied sort of taste. I've got a wide and varied eclectic taste from opera to metal to prog rock to techno so yeah so okay well look that sounds that sounds amazing and i know from talking to you you've got you're going in conversations with you know festival organizers insurance people you know uh, flights production so it's it's um it's quite exciting and it's a, it's quite an amazing undertaking you're taking and um you know look i i thought i just wanted to give a bit of a spotlight to what you're doing at least on this little small um segment here just to sort of introduce you to my audience and to just to give some awareness, but also so, so you know, us musicians and artists can come together and you might be able to give a voice to it. I think it's a pretty amazing uh, undertaking, at least that you're, that you're doing and taking all your corporate knowledge and your skills and networks and bringing that into, into something like this. It's a great undertaking. Thanks. Yeah, no, it, 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 it's, it's, it's so much fun to be uh, promoting this. Well, I get, I get to talk music and helping kids all day. That's what I do. And meeting people who share that vision is, is super exciting. Um, it, it, is, it is early days. The Kickstarter is really designed to give a lot of, of insight on how it needs to unfold. And you're right, I'm having conversations with some of the biggest players in the industry, but we're all, we, all, we don't wanna make a big mistake. We don't want 
to do this wrong. And that's that's 30 years of business experience. You, you do things systematically. You don't you don't jump to point um, point Z when you haven't even got the infrastructure of A and B and C in place. So mm. the Kickstarter is allowing me to do that. And then I can have gives you your market research, your insights. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. And, and, and then the conversations with these people who are watching becomes more concrete. It's it's not just an idea anymore. It's um, we, we start putting the the the, the bricks and mortar in place and to be so able when's to the uh, when when is your ideal uh, when are you when's your ideal timing on actually running this festival bud it's the 26th of august 2023 um right. it's it's a little bit out there but no that's you know, there's a lot of work to be done between yeah and i and i like i said i don't want to make a mistake i don't want to do what the fire festival guys did i don't yeah. want to promise people things i can't deliver and things take time and i want to build i want to have the time to build the momentum that this is another live aid this is another better design woodstock this is I, this the goal is and everybody involved has the goal that this is going to be this generation's woodstock or live aid this and you know 20 months that's not a lot of time to build the momentum and, and make it as big as possible yeah. you know, Live Aid had 40% 40, 40 of the world watched Live Aid, and, and that just started as an idea. And that was pre-internet. Um, yeah. We've come a long way since then. So yeah. Well, mate, it's a, it's a great undertaking. Um, what, what I'll do is I'm going to put the links um, just below this, um, this short little episode here, just to sort of, um, just so people know where the Kickstarter is and know how to get in contact with you. Um, you know, if, if anyone who's watching this that feels like they have a any sort of moniker of, of, of capability that they could provide in, in providing any type of uplift to, to, to Jeff here, I uh, just suggest you reach out and try and be part of making something, uh, you know, really, really special. And look, I'm, I'm certainly a supporter of it. And, uh, you know, I think that all of us can all sit there and go, oh, you know, this may or may not happen and oh, let's see what happens. But if we all have a can-do attitude and get behind some of these things, these big visions, that's how we, they they come to reality. So you know, I just encourage everyone to 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 try and be part of um, of something that's going to provide value to anyone, everyone. Yeah, yeah well, thanks for that. And uh, we're looking for ambassadors too, who just want to get behind it and be a part of something. Uh, I, I watched a, a couple of videos just recently that kind of sum up where I uh, where where by where the the team's heads at. One was a there's a guy dancing on a hill at a music festival. I saw that. Yeah. And he's all by himself, and within about 30 seconds, people are running down to join him. And that's all it takes in these things. And the other one is, I watched a video of Rage Against the Machine playing at a county fair when nobody's watching them, they're playing Killing in the Name of. And, and I was just, wow. Everything starts somewhere. And all it takes is a bunch of, a bunch of somebodies and a, and a crazy idea, and all of a sudden, it's not crazy anymore. And lives get changed well mate this whole series right is the lost art are about those guys and the people who have got that passion who are the outliers the thinkers of different the people who, who understand active listening and creativity and innovation and business enterprise and synthesize that all into to you know into new value so you know I, I thank you for your time and and you know let's let's hope we can all get behind this and get this to a place where it provides the value that you see and then the world sees so Thanks so much for your time, buddy. And um, you know, we'll package this up and get it out shortly. And uh, I'll I'll have the links on the uh, underneath the video here on YouTube. So anyone that wants to get in contact with Jeff, you'll be able to. And don't forget, hit the Kickstarter. Get behind. Thanks a lot, Finbar. I, I really appreciate you having me on. Um, what you're doing is fantastic. Okay. Thanks, buddy. Have a great day. You too. Bye bye. Cheers, mate.